Hi guys, my name is Pratham. Uh, I was in HR when I was in college and I had studied my bachelor's in financial markets. And alongside with uh, my BFM, I had studied one of the professional qualifications and uh, which was ACCA. And towards the end, when on graduation, so in my college three years, I attended college. I was studying for this course called ACCA for those who know, for those who don't know, it doesn't matter right now. And I was... Uh, also doing my training. So my uh, internships and basically for my three years, I was working as well. At the end of that, on graduation, I got hired in a company called PwC. So PwC, I know a lot of people will know, okay, we call it the big four, uh, one of the big four. The big four are KPMG, Deloitte, PwC and Ernst & Young. So if all of you are looking at finance, these four are like the the go-to companies for us in the future. So it's like if you are in tech, right? How would Google, Facebook, Amazon, Apple be? That's how the big four are for people like you and me. So luckily I got into PwC um, after college. I worked there for a year and a half and I realized that there is a huge, huge gap. Uh, and we've all heard it, but I saw it firsthand. That there's a huge gap between what we've studied academically and what the corporate world requires. Now, there are ways to bridge this gap, but most of us don't know what that is when we are in college. So today, uh, to what Mandan said, one of the things I will do is ensure that if any questions you'll have overall about finance, what's your day-to-day -day job like, X, Y, Z, I'll be, I'll be able to answer all of that. Second, if you'll have any questions outside of what I'm going to talk, I'm going to talk obviously about MBA and how CFA plus MBA gives you what you want in that stream of finance. But if you want to talk about any anything else, whether it is um, work experience, whether it is academics, like whether you should do CA or things, uh, you know, go abroad, ex or any questions that you all have, please feel free to answer. Because the main topic of today is going to be how after college, after ISME basically, you all need to plan what to do to make sure that in two, three years, you'll have the highest jump in the corporate world. What are the steps you have to take? With that being said, I'm going to start. Um, I generally open up with, if you'll have any questions before and please ask me right now. Um, and if not, any point of time you, you would like to um, ask something, feel free to unmute or put it in the chat box. I'll try and answer ASAP. So I'll just wait for a few seconds if any of you all have any questions so far. Okay, so let me get started, I guess, with prompt questions eventually. Uh, so first thing is first, uh, CFA plus MBA, uh, can anybody through chat box or someone just tell me how many of y'all are planning for MBA? Okay. Okay, so it seems like one. Okay. And now here's the main question for all of you guys, okay, almost all of y'all. Um, see, if majority of y'all must have, y'all must be having some ideal college y'all want to start at, but you wouldn't have a step-by-step -step plan as to how to get there. Um, this is for those who decided MBA. Is there anybody here who's not sure and wants to decide about MBA based on this seminar? Okay, I'm getting some responses for this also. Got it. Okay, and my last question guys, um, whether you've decided MBA or not, uh, how many of y'all are planning or thinking about CFA? All right, great, let's get started, okay. Uh, most importantly, people don't know the difference between what's the point if I study a CA or a CFA and what's the difference if I do an MBA in finance, right? This is generally, this is generally the most common question that what's the difference if I study a CA or a CFA and what's the difference if I do an MBA in finance? Do any of you all know that? And guys, if you all know it, I would request 
if it's not too uncomfortable please put your mic on and answer this rather than typing it down is there anybody who knows the difference so um yeah. guessing that for ca and cfa you have to do article ship whereas for mba and finance you wouldn't have to do that and you'll just do a post graduate degree okay so yeah that that definitely is a difference but that's more of a difference um which you shouldn't base any decision on because if you think about it like this doing an article ship is actually going to um you you do it simultaneously with your ca so it's better that you're working and studying versus only mba when you're going to spend the two years just studying and then you'll work so it's actually not you can't decide to do mba because you don't want to do article ship also a lot of mba colleges require work ex so don't don't get confused between the importance of work ex that ca and cfa is provide because mba will also eventually require you to have to, for you to have that experience but yeah it's definitely a feature which is a difference anybody else yeah so, so i'd just like to try and maybe wrong uh, when you talk about ca and cfa as degrees they are considered as a professional degree and you have the authority to sign in or uh, if if you have a company valuation in me in terms of that other than that uh, ca and cfa have particular fields where you major at when you look about uh, cfa is financial analysis so you know what company valuation means and if you are a ca you know the cost accounting and taxation also whereas mba in finance is basically uh, actually a roundabout of everything but now it depends on what you specialize in for the more awesome thanks anvi so she's um, really uh, you know almost it's a it's a 80% correct answer i'm just going to in fact not not she's not wrong in anything i'm just going to elaborate on what uh, um tanvi has been telling us okay so i'm now just going to deep dive into the uh, presentation so first and foremost guys understand the difference okay um cfa is a professional qualification which is specializing in finance so all those who are interested in things like investing um you know who, who get excited about equity markets and and trading and investing in foreign companies uh who who, who get excited about things like hedge funds i don't know if any of you all have watched billions billions is a show uh that's that's it's all about people who are specializing in finance if you want to live that kind of a life if you've seen the show then cfa kind of courses get you that so it's all about uh the markets and investing as your primary focus finance is the primary focus when it comes to mba mba is like what tanvi said it's more holistic when i and holistic means you obviously learn finance but you also learn strategy operations marketing hr there are other components so you come more from the business side versus just a specialist in finance so number one difference is actually what they teach you cfa is just finance 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 which is what most of you guys will probably want and mba it tells you that finance i'll teach you not as much as cfa okay so maybe they'll cover let's say 60 70% of cfa and then the rest is going to be your other other or uh, domains so that you can go and probably not only get a job in finance but even in any other executive role okay this is the first major dif difference point of difference okay i'm so sorry guys too many people are still entering i'm just admitting all of them uh, pratham if i can request you to just make me co-host i'll handle a bit of the you know the chat thing and even yeah, also really the other controls yeah yeah um Okay, I'm just making you the host, Mandan. So after this, uh, just uh, yeah, if there's anything you take over. Sure. There. Shall I go on now? Yes, please go on. Thank you. Sure. Okay. So the main difference is in the first most important difference when you are making a decision is on the curriculum. Is what you are what are you all going to learn? Uh, so just to summarize cfa is more investment oriented more specialized in the field of finance mba teaches you a lot of it but it adds to other business aspects of uh, holistic learning so difference number 
Any question in this so far, guys? Okay, if you'll have, in fact, what I'll do is, if you'll have a doubt, now just come and out loud speak about it. Okay, I'm going to the next difference. Okay, before I go ahead, it's very important, okay? For those who are not sure, you guys can start CFA level one uh, and whether you land up doing MBA, as I'll explain you how this will help, or you decide not to do MBA, but you want to get into CFA holistically, CFA level one, you can start because it's either going to help you for MBA or it's your first step into completing CFA. Either which way, doing it, there is no downside. So keep that in mind for the rest of the seminar. Okay, coming to the next point. Okay, it's this is sort of an extension to what I was saying earlier, guys. CFA, your trajectory is only in finance. You become the CFO, the chief finance officer. MBA gives you the option of, if you want, you can become a CFO, but you can also become a CEO because the CEO needs to know the other business aspects as well. Now, please understand, of course, this is general. There are exceptions where CFAs also become CEOs and MBAs obviously remain CFOs, but Primarily, what you learn, what, what, what training you're grilled through in these exams, in this, in your, uh, whether you call it internship or work experience, CFA takes you to CFO o level and MBA takes you to CEO level. Okay. If there's any doubt in this, please do speed up and ask me. Next, what is the recognition? Um, okay. I want to spend two minutes more on this than the other slides. And I really want you guys to be very clear about this. Okay. If you all have gone to a a place like is me if you all are coming from a strong background you all understand the difference between if there are 100 colleges in bombay you know the difference between the first the top 10 and the balance 90. the same thing employers look at when it comes to mba in mba think about this and keep this as your blank rule okay it's my personal recommendation to all of y'all whether you're looking at staying in india or going overseas for mba if y'all are not doing it from the top 20 MBA schools in India or abroad, don't do MBA. If you get in the 21st one, say no. Believe me, getting into the 21st and below, the, the value of the college is not high enough. The return in terms of learning, in terms of your growth will not, not, not match what if your friend is in the 15th best college. There is a, see, if you're in your 10th best and the 15th best college, so if, if Simple example. Let's say you are in the 10th best MBA college and I am in the 15th best MBA college. If you are in the top 10, I'm in the top 15. Between us, there is very little difference. Okay. But if a third person is in the 22nd, 23rd, 37th best MBA college, there is a massive difference between them and you. So MBA will depend on the school just because you have, you know, you've decided in your FY or SY, I'm going to do MBA. You give these entrance exams and you realize, yeah, I'm not getting into the ones which I want. Don't settle. Don't do it. Find another way because if, you know, don't pressurize yourself that I will do MBA, I will do MBA. Uh, and if I get into even a uh, an okay college, I'll get because I want an MBA degree. It, it might as well not get. And I'll give you all some shortcuts as to what to do if you don't get an MBA. How still can you progress in your career? So I'll come to that towards the end. So compared to MBA, CFA is much more universal. Now, whether I or, or, you know, Manthan, both of us have done CFA, for example, you know, it doesn't matter if you've done it three years apart. It doesn't matter if I've failed one of the levels and he hasn't, um, it doesn't matter at all. As long as you're both CFAs, we have the same ability to go and try and make a mark in the world. The companies that we can interview at, the salary package that, is, that's a, that, that will be offered to us, the profiles, that we work in will all be relatively the same. That does not apply for MBA. MBA may be from an IIM versus a Wellinka, there is a massive difference. So keep that in mind. Recognition is super important in terms of the differentiation. Okay. Any questions so far, by the way? All right, let's move to the next point. So Pratham, if you can just yeah. reshare screen and um... Try selecting stop annotations. I think that'll take away the, just try that. Uh, but uh, Mandan, I think uh, it's, yeah. Okay, I've, to, I've put the option share. on now, if you can try now, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, is, um, is it done? 
Yeah, I think it's fine. Okay, should I move on? Yes, please. Okay. Next. Now, this is, I've kept this slide because it's, I've been asked a lot. I personally recommend you guys not to pay attention to this aspect, but it's important that I share it with you all. So you all know. Okay. Uh, I'll just give you a minute to read because it's self-explanatory. So just go through it. Okay. So I'm just going to finish CFA. I'm sort of rereading what's written, but you can clearly see that the overall cost for CFA is not that much. Okay. Compared to obviously MBA in three, three, two and three and a half lakh, depending on the dollar rate and all, you will be done with CFA within two years. Uh, in return to of CFA, the, I'll give you a, so let me tell you a story. Okay. This is really good. So I used to work in PwC and, uh, I had a, I have a friend named Sharan. Now Sharan is a chartered accountant. He cleared CA in the first attempt. Now he, when he was working, he's my age. Okay. So we were working in uh, PwC in 2014. He wanted to get into the field of investment banking. Okay. Again, investment banking is probably one of the most popular fields in finance. I will explain that it comes in the slides later. And if I, if anybody wants to know, please ask me more, but Sharan wanted want to get into IB investment banking is, 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 uh, an extremely lucrative field in the field of finance. There is a lot of brain work. You're surrounded by the best in the industry. You network with the biggest of the people who are CEOs and investors. So a lot of people want to get into investment banking and so did Shara. Now in, in India, the best way to do investment banking is a combination of CFA plus MBA, not CA. Okay. So he had done CA. So what he decided to do is he said, okay, I'm, I'm any which way is planning to go abroad to study uh, MBA. So his MBA was sort of fixed. What about CFA? So he decided that fine, while working, I'm going to do CFA because like you guys, if you're attending college, we were working. I mean, eventually everyone's going to do that Monday to Friday bit. So he used to study on weekends and you know, his CA bit helped him. He cleared CFA level one, Se level one CA, a CFA getting cleared, helped him further his chances into the university he wanted. He went there to study, he came back and now he is working in the dream IB, the investment banking job that he wanted in, in, in um, Morgan Stanley. Now, the thing is, you need to understand that he planned this three, four years ago, five, six years ago, whatever. And he stuck to a plan, which he knew was a step-by-step -step process. That's what I want to sort of let you guys know that there is a, a you have a much better chance to get what you all want. If you all follow these few steps. So Sharan is this one example of CFA plus MBA gets you into the field you want. Uh, similarly, I have a couple of other friends. So I'll, I'll spread out the stories and tell you all. So you'll have some better context with India in Bombay. What happens when people just two years older than y'all are doing CFA or MBA and getting into the field of finance. Okay. So if you go through the investment path, CFA three lakhs over two years, whereas an MBA, if you see, I'll, I'll share the website link with, uh, all of y'all who want, I forgot the link. It has the average salary packages from each MBA college in, in India. So you'll have some understanding of what that is like. Uh, please don't fall into guys. One stupid thing I've seen so many people do is they read the newspaper when they're in their FYSI. Uh, if any of you all read yet. Okay. So these guys, they read the newspaper and they get all like, you know, oh, we read that this one person IIM got hired at the age of 22, 23 at a one crore package at Google. So look, if you are one of those people, then any which way is me suggesting you makes no do you should suggest me stuff. But if you're out of that exceptional bunch of people, don't get excited that oh MBA or CFA gives me so much money. Go with the average and talk to people around you like us who can share the real fact, what the salary packages are, what your actual profile is, what companies don't want CFAs, what companies want, which colleges can MBAs. So this sort of, segue I took or this detour I took just to remind you all of the don't fall into these stupid traps or pitfalls. People just get too excited with the, you know, the exception, the brain, the anomaly in the entire batch and they get excited about it. Don't fall within that. Okay. So coming back, uh, like I said, guys, if you guys um, uh, do it on the top 20, it's great uh, for MBA only then do it. At least this 20 lakhs is for India. Overseas, I mean, whether you want to get in on scholarship or education loan, or if you guys are well-to-do enough, go for it. But please be aware that after you go there, 
what is it that you want to do do you want to stay there do you want to come back i know have people who went there for mba stayed there for 3 years because they calculated that if i go to uh, us uh, you know do my mba there and then i get picked up in us the salary in us for 3 years will be enough that i make make back enough that i've paid for mba and then i can come back and start working in india so that is going to be situational to you the last point is what somebody i think uh, i think rudra asked uh, was we were talking about in the beginning but the last point is super important mba for 2 years on an average when you do you get stuck without work ex so of course if it's an iim or an isb or some you know uh, xlri or jamnalal bajaj and then you waste your one or two years it's fine right but i can guarantee you this i've been working from the age of 17 okay i was very excited to start working uh, when i was in college uh, and i realized that the power of work experience is very rarely matched with a good college name so work experience is something which you should do by default and on top of that if you add a strong college people who are going to hire you are hungry for people like us you know the ones who work and are studying and are from a good college so the only con for mba will be that you get stuck it's a full time thing don't do part time mba if anyone is thinking part time is remove from your mind completely useless all right so coming back to the point so remember cfa gives you that one advantage you can start working it's going to be tough it's not easy you have hundreds of issues of college timings you have uh, exams after you graduate you'll have you know you want to study you'll have so many things don't just put work experience at the top of your list saying that no matter whether i do cfa or mba the if i am sitting for a whole day and wasting my time it's not worth it either i'm studying for something and going there or i'm working and then figuring out how to study so work ex in cfa is going to help you gain that advantage when when i had interviewed at a couple of places one of the things that they asked me was that so at 17 when i was in the when we were in 12th i had started first working in an event management company because i had no idea about finance and all and i just wanted to know what the real world is like okay um and i didn't want to work with my dad because obviously like if i'm working with my dad then i i still won't know what the real world is like so i went from event management company then i did a little bit of some some something in the middle and then i went into a finance and accounting company so the work experience diversity will always 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 put you on a higher pedestal than somebody who's fresh but from an amazing amazing academic background if you combine the two you're unstoppable so that's a very important part about this slide right moving to the next one all right now since so many of you all said you all want to do cfa plus mba this is extremely crucial for you um i'm guessing you all have read the slide so i can explain now and you all will not be distracted right uh through again somewhere in the chat box can somebody tell me if you all okay sorry let me let me first say it and then ask the question there are two parts where you should focus on cfa if you want to get into the field of finance through mba okay the combination number one if you are in your fy or sy okay you should take up cfa and finish level 1 then go for your cat or your other gmat or whatever exams you are going to give so that when you are finally getting the cat or gmat score and you are called for an interview the interview may you will have the differentiator because of cfa level 1 that is part one also remember guys when you go for your interview right we are commerce students mba colleges mein there are engineers there are iitians there are people with work experience it's not going to be easy for a for a, a commerce student to make his mark and even if you do right i mean i'm sure some of you all will be able to but that doesn't mean you don't fight hard to get as many advantages as you can cfa level 1 is that advantage that's part one okay so if you are in a fy or sy time to start now uh cfa because you're in your ty it's better to study for cat or whatever gmat whatever you guys are going to get now some people have already started cat or gmat studying and they decided i'll first give this and then what happens because you know by the time you give it your interview process starts you will not have completed cfa and saying i'm pursuing cfa is not as helpful as saying i've passed level 1 okay so what do you do that time let's say you're in ty let's say or if you might be in sy for example and you started studying for cat or gmat fine if you don't want to switch a b immediately 
take your time finish off your cat finish off your gmat and then after that go for the interview and then of course you have to get in on the interview on your merit based on your history as well as your marks but assume you get in i have a friend again so i i love seeing the stories of the people around me because it gives us a lot of context i hope it helps you all he went to iim trichy now iim trichy is a decent college you know it's i mean it's iim at the end of the day so there is no downside to it when he went there he did what you all are saying he first gave his cat um and uh, uh, he got in and then he started studying for level 1 why because in the first 2 to 3 months of your when you start your mba you get this whole placement bit for internships so if your mba first year starts in june by july or or august companies come to hire you for internships since it's compulsory to do two or three months ka internship the point is these companies if they like your internship they also give you something called a ppo anyone knows what ppo is so ppo is pre placement offer it means technically in your first year of mba they will come um, in the first two three months interview you take you for an internship then the same companies come again at the end of your mba to interview everybody again and take them for a full time job so my friend got into this company called rbl okay i think it's in the isme building only um ratnagar bank okay it's a good bank and he got into it for his internship and this is what happened because of his so he he got into it and then he did performed well and they gave him a ppo pre placement offer that uh, don't worry you have your job ready as as soon as you finish mba at this package so he was sorted but how did he achieve that because he said after my cat i studied level 1 when i got into it for my internship i was ready to tell the company that i'm an, i'm going to be an iim plus cfa and that given the jump over the others who were just saying we are an iim student which is also good but he added it up to a finance uh, with a finance specialization so when people ask when to do cfa if you want to combine it with mba you can do it before you start even giving your cat or gmat that's my recommendation that's the best because you you know there are many many advantages number one uh, it helps you in your interviews number two by the time you reach your you, by the time you are aiming at completing your mba you can have completed level 2 and 3 within your mba a lot of people do that so there are many advantages to finishing it before however if you started studying for cat gmat it's not too late you can still give level 1 lastly i'm not good in the slide but there are people who after mba also do cfa uh, but the reasons are different and it's not for you guys right now because the goal for you all should be to do as much as possible early to get that return later great anybody has any questions in this slide um instead of an mba or uh, if you replace that with something like a masters in finance you know or uh, does that still work uh yeah sure right yeah yeah so yeah so the same uh stands true you know uh, if as long as long as you're doing masters from a from a from a university that has that recognition so maybe masters will not have top 20 Okay, it might have either top thirty, top forty, top fifty, whatever it is. Or if it's India, then it might have just top ten. Um, but yeah, it makes no difference. You can do MBA or Masters as long as the university or the college you pick has its merits. Yeah. What about anybody else? Because I was assuming this part will have questions. Because generally, I get asked a lot for this. So, so I have a question. Uh, because we're talking about CFA, you know, usually this is this. Uh, I don't know if it's a myth or it's a perception in the uh, going on right now that FRM, which is a degree called Financial Resource Management, is kind financial of financial risk management. Yeah, sorry, sir. So it is kind of a head start for you to be able to be prepping for CFA. So is that true, or should we actually consider it as a as an option till the time we're eligible to actually start preparing for CFA? Which year are you starting in right now, Tanvi? Second year. Yeah. So okay. Um. So quick detour again then. FRM guys, uh, if you all have heard what just what Tanvi just said, it's not true. FRM is not a it's it's financial risk. So I'll tell you what it's okay. Understand this. Let's assume this is the entire scope of chartered accountancy. Okay, it's this broad. Chartered accountancy is finance plus accounts. Got it? Now, if I want to do CFA, the amount I'm going to study compared to CFA becomes lesser. 
right? Because I'm only specializing in finance. It's deeper, but it's narrow. FRM, which is financial risk management, is even narrower than CFA, and it's not as specialized as CFA. So if you really go in the real world and you show people I'm a CFA plus FRM, they'll stop listening to you when you say CFA. FRM makes no difference. Second, FRM ka scope in India, I have personally seen it start dwindling. It used to be a really stronger degree a few years, around a decade ago, in the beginning of 2000 and this 11, 12 ka decade. I remember because when I was in college, so I was in college in, in that phase and uh, FRM had picked up at that time, but it's not there in the real world anymore. Um, just for you all to know, the real finance qualifications besides master's or MBA are CA, CFA, what I can tell you about ACCA because that's what we do full time now, CFA, ACCA. There is CMA, there is CP, CMA is US based uh, management accounting. There is CPA, which is the USCA. There is actuarial science, which is the better version of risk management. Okay, it's the, it's the sort of the premium one. It's like for the ones who have, who want high risk, high return kind of courses. It's super tough, but super rewarding. Um, and then there are smaller courses which are not as recognize so i'm not i'm just saying it out for your knowledge but courses like cfp which is financial planning that also has a little bit of value so frm remove from your mind um in india there used to be something known as cost accounting it's still there but that has less value cs which i don't know if any i mean sure most people have heard about company secretary it's not it's not for it's not for you guys. Okay. Like it's, it's great if some of you all want to do it because it has its little value. It has its real value in a niche space, but CFA or MBA gives you a much broader chance to whether you want to work in, you know, one field or another, or this company or this, or in India or abroad, CFA, MBA, CPA, CMA, ACCA, CA, all of this will give you that FRM. You'll have to be really picky about where you want to work and they have to accept you. So it's not a win-win over there. So, if you're thinking of FRM, my suggestion is don't. Secondly, guys, I've told you CFA, when you are in CFA, whether you're in your first year or second year, there is you, you're obviously eligible to give the exam in your TY. But that doesn't mean you don't start right now. If anybody, if you guys are an FI thinking I'll start in my TY, mistake, huge mistake, don't be a fool. Don't underestimate the, the amount of time it will take to study and don't overestimate how easy it will be. Care. First and second year, I'll chill. Third year, I'll start working, uh, studying. If you're in your second year, then we, I don't see any reason why you don't have to start with either CFA or CAT. And again, because you're asking if, if I'm the one who's giving you an opinion, start with CFA. Stupidity to wait till t third year because uh, the amount you can learn if you start early is, is it's, 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 the, the returns are basically disproportionate. So follow that logic if you can. So Pratham, here I just had a slight uh, query. I think for CFA, um, at least when we were giving, I mean, when we were in college and we were allowed to give it, there was a slight rule that we could give it in the first and second year. I think they revised that very recently. And now they've made it that only if you're in the third year or graduating year, third year for like commerce students and fourth year for engineering students, only then you can appear for the CFA level one. Because they realize that, you know, we were actually completing our levels during our undergrad and that's not the same as it is abroad. So it's slightly changed that. Yeah. Um, so, so I'm saying CFA, that. Hmm. No, no, I'm so sorry. So if I have to start I'm studying clear, in year three. No, you can appear in year three. Appear that's in what year I'm three, saying. Exactly. You start studying earlier. You are not the, right. if I'm going to come to the eligibility part of CFA, where we talk about hmm. the fact that you can only appear in your third year, but right. you can appear in your third year in the month of August. So if you're prepared in your SOI, you immediately give it. In fact, Absolutely. you cannot give CFA level two unless you're a graduate. So level one, you can give in your final year. Level two, you can give once you're a graduate. But you can start preparing in your FY or SY. It makes no sense waiting till TY because that means you wasted your two years most likely. Second, Correct. in your TY, if you are pressurized with your third year BCom or whatever that is, that's another additional burden. And you'll essentially waste time. So just it's completely incorrect to wait for a third year if you're looking at either CAT or CFA. Start in your second and best start in your first. Okay, it might be slow, but you will definitely reap the rewards. So anybody else? Uh, so I had a question. So oh. I actually, um, if I want to work in the, and if I want to do my MBA in UK, 
then uh, should I also do CFA and then like CFA ka level one and then go for an MBA in UK or like as in does it have the same amount of how do I say this value in UK that it does in India or should I put, do something? Yeah, so uh, CFA luckily being a US based qualification is internationally recognized. It's the number one officially in the world, the number one qualification in the field of finance and investment management, which means whether you go to UK or to Australia or any, any other European country or Canada, CFA is recognized and it will help you in terms of them evaluating your profile. And look, that's the whole point, right? Uh, that worst case scenario give level one and just wait, see if you want to do level two or three, but at least do level one because number one, any which way it doesn't clash with your MBA, right? It's not like you're going to, you can only study MBA for MBA or only study for level one. You, you can do level one, finish it in six months, pass, and then study your cat for your cat or GMAT or whatever exams you want to give. Uh, but hundred percent go with this level one on your back, because if you want to get into finance, MBA or master's in finance, it will help you. Got it. Thank you. Anybody else? Again, I'm saying guys, I have personally been doing a lot of work on CFA for the last few years. We've trained thousands of students by now. So anything with respect to what, uh, whether it's eligibility or when to do it or how difficult is it or how much time it takes, all that, ask, feel free to ask me, right? Right, moving on now. So talking about CFA, I'll just quickly brief you all about CFA for those because clearly there is some confusion still. Uh, I'm just going to quickly run through it. Yeah, please read because uh, again, slide self explanatory. Um, so, hi, sir. So I have one yeah. question. Mm -hmm. So, um, okay. So like, this might sound uh, not uh, logical, but like, does it make sense doing a CFA if you don't want a career in finance, but you do want to become uh, an angel investor eventually, you know, as an early retirement plan? What do you think about that? Yeah, that's, uh, no, that's, that's, it's a rare question, but uh, the short answer is you can, because simple, I'll ask you a simple question. Most I mean, people have an because answer. Like the way you put it, you can do it while studying for your third year or your second year. You can do it while doing other stuff as well or while working. So it doesn't harm doing it anyway. Yeah, I'm so sorry. What's your name? I don't, I can't see your name. On oh, the can you just... sorry. Hi, oh, Yash. Okay, Yash again. Great. Um, yeah. So yeah, like I said, it's a, it's a rare question, but the answer to this is you're 100% right. Uh, I'm sure most of you all would have heard or will have known about people who are older than you all who've completed CA. Okay. Yeah. But then either immediately after, or after a couple of years of studying CA, they're not in the field of finance or accounting at all. They're yeah. totally divested into another field. True. Right. That's not same that with engineering. Same with engineering. Yeah. Same with engineering. Right. Yeah. And that doesn't mean that they studied it uh, and they failed at it or something. There are two reasons you do what you just said. Number one, you, 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 dude, you're 18, 19, 20. When you take that call, you don't know what you're going to feel at 25, 26, and you might as well not enjoy finance. So there is no reason to stick to finance if you hated it, even though you began it. So a lot of people shift because they realize it's not my calling, but they have a good professional degree on their, in their pocket that tomorrow, another pandemic happens, there's a disaster and they have to go back to something, fall back on something. They have their CA or CFA. That is one. The other is people like you who genuinely are willing to aspire saying that I will work. I don't know what the benefits are, but since I'm doing nothing, might as well put it to good use. Okay. And when I figure out what I'm going to do with it, I'll use it that time. Otherwise I'll keep it with me. So yeah. you might not become an angel or you might change your mind basically of becoming, but yeah. that doesn't mean your CFA degree or a qualification is a, is a waste. Uh, the, the, the major advantage, if you're thinking in your case is number one, it's not like learning finance is ever going to go waste, right? Because you can apply it for yourself and family versus applying it for clients, which is what you do yeah. if you're a professional CFA, you can apply it for yourself. But, but, but also passing these exams, breaking your head over these things and 
just structuring your mind to the way the the real world works uh, through these exams gives you you know in 3 years if you and i have a discussion i'll not know your 22 23 if you've completed cfa i'll feel you're much older because the way pe- these exams force us to think the way they 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 mandate us to learn and and apply and and it's all case study based for example so you as a person only intellectually you grow uh these things are not going to be quantified in any job or any business you do but it definitely makes an impact in the long run so whether you plan on doing it for a career or you're putting it in your pocket saying i'll use it as and when time comes there is no downside to it got it so um i just had one question so then you spoke about uh like the cat and the gmat as well as this right so if what if one prepares for like because like applications everyone starts applying like this year if you want to go abroad you have to apply this year in around september october maybe november right a uh, max december so that whole second half of the year so if you finish the you know whichever exam right now and then then start preparing for the um you know the cfa does that make sense or uh yeah look at the end of the day like i said right uh there is you you yeah you can do what you just said my suggestion is you're in that means you're in your second year or third year second year second year yeah i um look a cfa exams are held four times a year okay now for level 1 earlier it was only twice a year it's every feb may august and november on an average it takes 6 months to study along with uh college or work So if I calculate backwards, if you hypothetically start now or in a month, okay, for your application also you'll be eligible, saying that I'm level one clear. Uh, that's my so. So guys, understand one thing about what I'm saying, okay? I'm only telling you all this because I was sitting where y'all were a few years ago, okay? A lot of your own teachers were my teachers, so I know what y'all are studying. I know what your mindset is mostly towards, and those who are attending this voluntarily. i i can completely resonate with you all so uh stick to one rule for the next 5 years is that don't don't slow down don't pat yourself on the back saying oh, you know i'm already doing call i'm already doing this uh i can't i can't do anything now abhi reply nahi hai so sorry um yeah so i'm saying guys don't slow down if uh, yash you are looking at applying and you realize that this is going to give you that jump start jump into cfa um, or whatever jump into whatever you think is required don't don't be so rely if you made a plan for december applications that gives you no reason to not start right now so my first recommendation is you know you can foresee 6 months later you have something start cfa however for whatever reason if you don't want to in your application you mentioned i'm going to pursue cfa but then it's on them if they want to take it seriously or not there's no better proof than actually showing them the result but um yeah otherwise you apply and then hope that they accept so that when you go there or in your interviews you can then voice out that you know i'm done with level 1 oh, and stuff like that but then that's the thing like there's some isn't there some ethics rule or something that you can't claim that you've done the cfa level 1 or something in a particular mm-hmm. way or something like uh, that is there no no so you cannot say so you don't say you've done it if you've not done it you either say you're pursuing it okay or you submit your application hope they pick you and in the meantime finish level 1 and then say you can't there's no it's absolutely wrong to claim you've done it if you've not my point of yeah, telling yeah. you these things is yeah go on but like they have this thing right like you can't mention it on your resume till you have the charter or something no, no, like no. that no 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 the whole world as long as you clear level 1 you can everybody has cfa level 1 cleared level 2 cleared level 3 cleared and if you are something one of the charter holder which is with your yeah. experience no no yeah absolutely not um, the whole world including the biggest firms right your jp morgan your city bank your bank of america the big four grand thornton name the companies which hire uh, cfas right ambit crisil uh, they they hire level 1 people how do they know they are level 1 because you have it in your cv so no no there is nothing unethical at all just don't lie obviously got it yeah yeah okay uh, moving on um so to one andan was saying right you need only these two criterias 
there are more which are related to work experience but i decided not to put it because i'm sure it won't be applying to any of you all so long as you are in your final year you start giving the exam but if you are in your first year or second year start preparing and you know what what's the worst thing that can happen if you prepare now right you will overwork yourself on weekends you will probably go for a few less lesser plans you might fail the exam you might spend a little more time money effort that's a downside the upside is literally unlimited right if you pass it your brain will literally start understanding the world of finance in your normal day to day scenario to you're graduating with more than just your degree which you started in your first year you thought you'll only come out with the with bcom and bme here you have your cfa third any plan you have whether it is to work or for mba cfa level 1 is there to at least push you towards that goal that you have no downside in starting and screw it now worst case leave it in the middle if you really hate it but don't not start it the worst mistake i've seen is you decide to delay procrastinate and you make up reasons that you are busy or you have a better plan it it doesn't work and look the, there are enough people who do that right it's damn good in a way for you if you are not like that because you can beat 90% of the competition who are any which way lazy don't be that way focus hard on saying that what can i do today that i'm hoping will give me the rewards because you can't see your next 5 years so just do whatever is obviously you know the world is telling you that yeah this is recognized so do it and doesn't have to be cfa it can be anything else but do something along with your with your free time right it, even if it's not academics but 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 don't lie to yourself that i'll do it in my third year because today i it makes no sense it never no, doesn't make sense okay um uh, quickly again guys so uh, not much for you all to focus on right now but only look at level 1 uh, all the three levels of cfa have the same 10 subjects but right now just focus on level 1 uh, can you all see my cursor yeah okay so uh, fra financial reporting this is an accounting subject a uh, corporate finance is a subject where how do big companies make decisions involving money so this will be things like in, like you know i have you know one crore and i want to invest it either here or here which will give me a better return how to calculate that that's corporate finance equity investments is equity you know it's about stock markets it eventually comes into valuations of companies and stuff like that next is fixed income like it sounds fixed income is debt um right so you put money in your bank and you get fixed income you put money in a in a company bond or corporate bond you get fixed income derivatives super interesting for those who are finance geeks uh, it's a little complex for those who have not studied it but it's, it's so i'm not getting into it okay right now alternative investments is things like real estate gold now now crypto all of that will come into alternative investments portfolio management most cfas who want to become cfas for the qualification get into portfolio management level 3 is almost 100% portfolio like not 100% but majority is portfolio management and what is portfolio management let's say i'm a cfa and i believe i know that all of you guys are putting your money in the bank and you are getting a 6% interest for example i come to each of you all and i say guys listen instead of that give me your money i will put it in different places because i understand all this and it's just 6% i'll give you a 12% return and in return of that you give me 1% for example so you make a you make 11% which is 5% more than here i take money from you know all of you all right i take little money from mantha i take money from yash from rudra from from all of you all and then i realize that okay now i have enough money to invest and get gain big returns and if i give that to you all i get a fee so your risk will become that you are investing in me instead of the bank and your return is if i come through i'll give you a better return than what the bank does that's what portfolio management is all about okay so uh, somebody i think yashini asked me that what happens if um you know you you don't get into cfa you can do this for your own family your own savings also you can use these kind of uh, skills right ethics um is a subject it's simple you just got to know what's right versus wrong quantitative method is is statistics uh, so and it only comes in level 1 so when you have hate math uh don't look at this and get scared it's not that hard right you learn concepts like time value of money and all the the basics and economics what we know as micro and macro, micro and macro economics level 2 level 3 any question yeah yes oh 
sir so are there any prerequisite like like things we need to know before doing a cfa like like so as long as you are um appearing for it in your third year okay uh, the only prerequisite is what i showed you earlier which is your passport in terms of requirements not in knowledge because everything that you can see here is starting from zero okay these are the kind of companies I that so yeah please ami yes yeah, so sorry to interrupt so um, here just to get clear i think so you already talked us through, through this but um, if i want to pursue investment banking as my career then this cfa will be really necessary right in india mba is necessary for investment banking uh, abroad cfa is mandatory but in india only mba will any which way get uh, sort of might be a barrier for you so to ensure that to get into investment banking you do mba from a good college where they accept investment banking freshers you do cfa so it's not mandatory for the profile of investment banking but it's sort of necessary for the um uh, the journey you know because you won't get into the best mba college unless you have things like this along with few other things in your profile so that's the reason you do cfa not because the company wants you to do cfa abroad companies want you to do cfa understand the difference so if i want to do level 1 level 2 level 3 and be like you know get that chartered ship ka charter holder yeah the charter holder thing then um and then if i want to do mba can i do that too or like like is it like i have to spend two years doing the cfa first and then do mba or can i do cfa and mba together you can do it together uh, you can do level 1 uh, and then wait for two years finish your mba and then as you start working aram se pursue level 2 level 3 at your own leisure there is no time frame for cfa uh, you can finish level 1 and level 2 and then do level 3 after five years it's your choice okay okay uh the exams like i was saying for level 1 i held four times a year for level 2 and 3 for now i held twice a year and it's held across the world so you can literally give level 1 today level 2 in 2025 and level 3 in 2030 and you will still become a charter holder by 2030 right that is why i started my whole uh, whole presentation saying that start level 1 you don't know where it's going to lead you at least you know it's with you know you, your momentum the, the 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 launch the take off has started Can you yeah, give yeah. two different levels in two different countries? Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Um. Somebody, somebody else is asking. Uh, sir, I don't know. Uh, sir, what kind of a job will I land in India if I do only CFA, not MBA? Oh, so okay. So if you do only, sorry, if you do only CFA, I'll tell you the top few things that people go for. number 1 equity research equity research means if you love the stock markets right equity research is your go to job all day long you will sit go through companies ke balance sheets profit and loss accounts look at the news talk to people attend these conferences of these company shareholders meetings talk to their ceos talk to their uh, board of directors because you're trying to make a decision that will this company give me returns which are exorbitant in a few years and how do you do that you do it through research which is what they teach you in the equity portion of cfa so that's one equity research right what basically what warren buffett does but at his level at his god level okay second uh, like i already explained portfolio management super super popular portfolio management is like i've already mentioned you take uh, you you manage other people's money by investing in different places to give them a better return than what they were getting and in return you get a fee massive uh even you will have seen the big shot okay what christian bale's character was doing was he was a portfolio manager i mean he was a little hedge fund manager but portfolio manager was a little junior third is hedge fund manager now hedge fund is like a mutual fund. anyone knows what mutual everyone knows what mutual funds are someone please yeah i seen another Yes, sir. Tell me, tell me. So, tell me what mutual funds are. Huh? Okay. So, mutual funds essentially are that if you have five hundred rupees or five lakh rupees and you want to invest, but you have no idea, you give it to a professional. The professional is me in this case, 
and like in portfolio management i'm taking a lot of people's money and i'm investing but if i'm investing as a mutual so if i'm a mutual fund person i'm basically working with hdfc mutual fund or motilal oswal and stuff like that but i'm doing the work of a portfolio manager a hedge fund is a mutual fund on steroids like it is mutual funds are look if you put your 500 rupees or 5 lakh rupees in a mutual fund sebi has to take care rbi has to take care of your money okay there are many rules that restrict the safeguarding of your money hedge funds is more private hedge funds has less rules so if i have 5 lakh rupees i want to put it in a mutual fund and get a 12% return over time that's safe that's great but if i want more then i have to take a risk give it to a hedge fund manager who probably is not 12 will give me 24% but he can also lose it so because there are less rules there which are safeguarding my money so that's a hedge fund in india hedge funds are a little lesser than abroad but hedge funds is a big big reason why people do cfa fourth corporate finance uh, working in these kind of you know pwc kpmg so but i was working there were cfas ka full section is there i have a friend her name is devanshi who works in a company called crystal she is only a cfa cfa level 3 clear only cfa she um, she was when i was in pwc uh, pwc she was with me but that time she was just a graduate then she uh, studied a cfa finished level 3 she works in a company called crystal in crystal she does credit rating so her job is research reports financial modeling so if you guys like playing with numbers and you all get excited then um you know you there is that whole side of it uh uh fine I don't know if everyone wants to stay in finance, but there is a whole section which is into business development in finance. So I don't know again if you all have heard about a company called Anand Rati. Okay, Anand Rati is an Indian company which is really massive. Um, so through and through, I know somebody who was a level two cleared. Now I don't know how true this is, but she was a level two cleared, and she was saying that I was earning eight lakhs from Anand Rati. Um, eight lakhs is what a CA gets on an average as a fresher. So that's a If you get the same kind for CFA level two, and she's right, that's brilliant. But that was more on the business development side, where she would go to people, and because of her understanding of finance, she could explain to the rest of the world what her company does, and that's how she made her living. So, if you are only a CFA, there is a core finance subject: equity, portfolio, valuation. Valuation, if I missed it, valuation is something I personally used to love. Sit all day and use different models, try and identify the value of whether a whole company. or of an individual asset uh or individual stocks and 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 people make decisions on that so valuation is something that a lot of people love so these are the kind of things that you can do if you are a cfa in india and i've not exhausted the list there are more things but i know these are the more popular ones and what you guys some of you all will want so that's the sort of gist or the list of cfa uh, scope in india anybody has i'm sorry if i've uh, did i answer your question whoever asked me this yes sir thank you thank you okay all right and uh, yeah so like i was saying right uh, look this is the company anand rati i was talking about this dsp mutual fund is also hiring a lot of c i mean all these companies man um yeah yeah you i have a faculty member who is from icici security who is a cfa and he got hired into this because of this. so uh and when i personally have placed students i mean we as a team of placed students have been in literally almost all of these companies as cfa level 1 2 or 3 okay and the best part you don't even need experience if you're just a level 1 you ex they expect you to be to be a fresher so that's the advantage that you all have okay lastly guys to conclude this uh, entire thing my suggestion is talk to more people especially who are cfas or mbas don't worry about how like i said that investment side i put in the presentation but it's not the key okay don't worry about the cost or the difficulty um, i'll send across the slide this presentation to mantan if you all want and y'all can um go through it for your own understanding lastly figure out if cfa mba which ones apply to you both one get started if you're still not sure and you can reach out to us we have complete experts in cfas whether it is our faculty members whether it is people who are working in corporates at senior positions whether it is just you want counseling and advice um and if you want any help right from from training to what kind of material to use when to start how much to study how fast to go is it the right time all of that um 
so yeah so this is sort of the the conclusion of my presentation and now if anybody has any more questions i'm more than happy to answer and mantan one thing um, i have a form which i want everybody right. to fill should i share that with you or how do i should i share it in the chat box right now and you can you share it in the chat box right now so whoever is here can fill it right now itself yeah so i think if you can just uh, yeah filling it right now would be really helpful and in the meantime i can ask everybody uh, so i can answer everybody's questions oh hi so i had uh, so two questions so first thing so what does uh, what services does uh, zell education provide in terms of helping you or uh, you know smoothly get done with your cfa sure um one second guys so i've just post uh mandan is saying only host and co-host can send messages mm, no okay just send it to me then i'll post it on the chat i think it's allowing everyone to but just send it to me i'll send it khushbu yeah so um mandan once again i'll just have it shared with you just share this i'm sending you this share it to mandan now it's not it's not going through from my laptop उटेड in terms of where to source the study material how to go about the studying process how to structure your time to actually study and work or study and college and whatever what not no i completely understand great so yeah. in fact that was one of the major reasons that uh, we sort of started zell uh, because okay so at zell, so uh, after pwc me and a me and a co-founder we started zell um with the intention of trying to bridge that academic and corporate gap that we saw uh, one of the ways we realized is because we were all finance students uh, we realized that training in finance is is not the way we want so we provide training for courses which have scope in india today so courses like cfa like acca like cma like cpa like almost all like we don't do actuarial science as of now but we know because we are in touch with the whole company um the 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 portfolio of companies that you must have seen some time back they let us know what they want so what we do is we design uh, the training mechanism uh, so what is the right time to start how do you go about the registration what kind of material do you want is cfa also if for somebody would ask me only cfa if you want if you come here when you go for interviews i don't say we, you can go just with cfa level 1 then you have to learn for example a little bit about excel basics of modeling and then you go you have to learn how to communicate in a slightly professional manner you need to know those those soft skills have to be there so we help with all of that where we we guide you first of all is it so today yash can come and ask me that i want to do this and i might tell him that it doesn't seem it's the right course for you right instead try doing only mba or you know what i'll send you to the right place if i can help you second if i can help you start to and we'll hold your hand so when to start how to you know what's the whole process of registering can we take over or can we help you in that when to start how do we how do we ensure that your the the that it it doesn't clash with your personal uh, day to day you know if you have colleges on saturday or if you have exams coming you can't say that you know you can't leave cfa because you have saturday colleges right you will have to come up with a way that you can still manage it by only studying on sundays or studying after work uh, so for example most of our training is only on weekends even though we have a lot of people who want weekdays but at the end of the day weekends help uh, we send you for interviews if you want to get some some internship some form of of uh, training and with recommendations to help you with your mba or you know things like that so holistically start to end whether it's earning a certification or getting you placed or getting you to pass essentially we try to and try to build your career from there Oh, and by the way, we have mentors from corporates who, if you apply, they'll be with you for a few months to sort of hone you in that in that direction that you prefer. Um. Also, uh, like in addition to like just uh, you know, like maybe doing a job, 
like what about say or uh, prospects for like starting up or you know something in the fintech space or something using the knowledge that you acquire I- i'm assuming the knowledge you acquire in cfa could help with that yeah i mean the, the for starting up you definitely need more than an idea you definitely need just course, more than what course, you yeah. want to do right and yeah, yeah you need like some blocks. knowledge and skill sets and stuff like that yeah correct there are three things that you require besides the idea right you need the knowledge you uh, you you people who generally have work ex they they so either you have knowledge or you have work experience or you have both okay uh, and and you'll never be prepared to start no matter what you study you've got it's one of those things you have to dive in uh, and you'll figure it out but it adds to your credibility big time because when you go and tell somebody that hi my name is you know yash and they'll say okay so what right uh, but you want to do something in fintech and you say i'm yash and i'm a cfa uh, you know and i've worked for 6 months in 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 jp morgan now they listen to you more than just i'm yash so uh, and and most of the people who start up if you see they do have some qualification the most of course there are exceptions uh, but it's important right because you if you learn finance you'll be able to identify problems in finance and that's how you'll find a solution for it right plus if you're doing fintech right now you've got to upskill yourself upskilling means you've got to learn basics of python you've got to learn basics of data analysis you've got to learn basics of uh, these aspects if you want to get into entrepreneurship uh, but yeah start with finance because it's your backbone it's the core and then you will figure it out as you realize that the world wants this of me so i have so, a question uh, can you uh, differentiate between acca and cfa and also do we learn about investing in acca sure so acca is a uh, global chartered accounting okay it covers the same thing that we cover in ca in india except for the local tax and law so if, for example it's ayush right so ayush if, if if i'm a ca and you are an acca okay we both will actually have the same knowledge same level with a few differences like indian tax and all of that so acca uh, is more for people who say i want to work in the big four i want to work in consulting i want to work in advisory i want to work in uh, uh, i want to work overseas basically okay i want to work in audit all these things will help you with acca except for tax you can do the same thing that cas do now that is acca cfa like i mentioned in the beginning is a specialization in finance so subjects like financial management corporate finance these things will get covered in both acca and cfa okay but cfa has more in depth whereas acca has more concepts so if you don't know what you want to do go for a broader thing like acca where you say okay as long as i'm learning everything then i can choose later and if you're sure about it you stick to a cfa i have two three students one of them's name is zen zen finished acca in his college cleared it in his third year and then he picked up cfa right and now he's working in basically anything in the field of fna fna means finance and accounts anything in the field of fna he wants now he can do it. so it's it's uh, so that's the basic difference and in acca you learn about investing but not as much as you learn through cfa see acca is more broad cfa is more deep thank you so i have a question too so uh, regard i mean it might sound a bit vague but uh, what is the if i am a cfa then what is the salary that i can expect in my first year yeah so um okay abadi uh, mandan have you shared the form i have i've shared it on the chat yeah, because... with everyone i hope they started filling in guys please fill the form yeah. um... and for those who must have left no mandan just please see if you can get them to fill it through whatsapp i'll share it on the student groups with them as well great thanks yeah so um yeah so packages uh level 1 if you are just level 1 and nothing else you have the depending on the form and the profile it ranges anywhere between 4 to 6 lakhs in level 1 you will get a little more than what a graduate gets okay so if a graduate is getting 4 and that company you will get 5 or 6 if a graduate is getting 3 you will get 4 that is level 1 level 2 is extremely important because it will matter where you see between level 1 and level 2 the minimum amount of time it takes is 6 months 
so on an average it takes a year okay if you guys are fast great but you know if you do something in those 6 months then level 2 where you go for another job or a raise it'll matter that you complete level 1 to plus the 6 months of work ex so if you work in a in a in a goldman sachs which is an internationally powerful huge company yeah you work in blackstone which is massive your level 2 salary will shoot up um whereas otherwise it can go from 6 to 8 you know and then level 3 level 3 is a little it's more it's it's a, in a good way it's on you because if you are independent by level 3 you can charge whatever you want based on how good you are if you are working for a company they will generally offer you above 10 lakhs for level 3 now this is the average there are people who get more as well as people who get less but this is what i have been able to do over the last 5 years for my for people who i know and who come to me for this uh, and you combine it with mba it You can double all of these numbers. Okay. Uh, okay. There's one CSA question from. And... No, go ahead, Rudra. You have a follow up. So basically, CFA and uh, MBA together, you can look uh, like CFA level three cleared, and MBA together, you can look somewhere around more than twenty twenty five lakhs. If it's MBA is in the top twenty. Yes. 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 Yeah. Got it. Thank um, you. So there's one question from Falguni. It's on the chat, and she's asked me. She's asked, uh, "Do the number of attempts while clearing CFA affect prospects?" No. It only so Falguni, only our CA CA matters. It's only Indian CA that that discriminates. CFA, ACCA, actuarial science, even other Indian degrees do not do that. If you give CAT twice. And you get into the MBA, they treat it as though it's your first cat. They don't distinguish. It's only Indian CA which does that. Got it. Samad, please go ahead. Hi, sir. So, um, I just recently appeared for my CFA level one. Um, I decided to do MCom. So, I basically graduate in May. I decided to do MCom for two years. but now after you know going through your presentation i'm reconsidering giving gmat or you know um probably to get my masters abroad so now can you suggest if i should go ahead with my plan of action to go ahead with mcom or you know start preparing for other entrance for mba entrance examinations okay so for everybody this is a very important thing okay i i have actually made a big post of this on linkedin and i had a lot of people who reacted to it remember what i'm going to tell you okay the first academic decision that you make in your life in terms of which college or cfa for you in your case right the first academic decision can be based on things like this i do the presentation you you get little you know you understand more people around you tell you that listen samad i think you are really good at this you should do this you you believe others for your first academic decision okay you you do what others are doing you do what you hear about because you don't know much but the second academic choice always has to come out of self awareness now what i mean by this is you are not asking the right question whether you should do mcom or mba the right question is leave both Okay, please CFA also first decide now that you've gone through a little bit of CFA, you understand a little more about yourself. What is it that you feel you like? Work in a couple of places if you have it. Decide that I think now I want to go in this direction, and to get there, do I need to do MBA? Do I need to do MCom? Do I need to do Level Two? Do I need to do all? Then you take the decision. Don't go. Don't still make the second major decision of your Masters or MBA without just saying that okay, I'm just going to collect degrees. you know don't 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 fall under that trap okay so i would suggest in the, your question you should ask yourself is that um you know i i think i want to get into for example hedge funds you know because you spoke to 10 people you spend a month researching you put in effort and now now you believe that that makes more sense what do you have to do to get into a hedge fund kind of a company if you want to work in india is mcom the right route is none of these the right route then take that step do you understand so I'm sorry, I can't give you a direct answer, but your question will not. I'll misguide you if I tell you yes, leave MCom or stay with MCom. So my suggestion is decide the next step, 
and then calculate backwards. All right, thank you, sir. So there's one more question, Pratham, on the chat, and I think this will be the last question because I do believe they have classes at three thirty. Um, so this question is from Shubham, and he's asked: In case they do go the CFA path, but they don't get into a top twenty MBA college, what should then they how how should they alter their choices then? Yeah, so it's a good question, man. There are a lot of people who go through that dilemma. Just don't do one thing which everyone does. You feel trapped. so you take an okay college up don't do that okay short of that you have you see it's not easy uh, you'll have to work hard you'll have to uh, you'll have to sort of either reattempt to get into that mba college if that's your dream you'll have to complete level 2 level 3 quick quicker than what you had anticipated you'll have to probably explore your different options in finance more aggressively but unfortunately there is no silver bullet there is no that you know backup which i can tell you um cfa is thankfully there for you so you have a, a safety net but if mba is not there guys it's all on effort i mean invest in yourself study study different things besides finance like somebody was asking about the startup upskill yourself it's the world is changing your first job is your your degree will help you get your it'll not even get you first job it'll help you get through the door for your first few interviews after that it's on performance after that it's not on your degrees so it's unfortunate if you don't get in but it's also not the end of the world um work extremely hard read a lot of books uh, you know just learn whatever you hear about things like ai and machine you don't know what that just learn you don't know how your opportunity will explode because it's not like you only learn all these things in mba colleges there are people like us who outside are learning and they are finding ways to grow in the world and that's what you will have to follow uh again i'm sorry i don't have, there is there is no you know direct answer absolutely so um i think that was it from the questions um and lastly i would just like to thank you pratham for doing this i personally enjoyed the anecdotes i thought it was very relatable i've seen all my yeah. friends go down this path uh myself going down picking between cs cfa and mbas So I think it was really, really um, uh, obviously contextual, and it felt the anecdotes were really spot on. So thank you so much for doing that. All the students they've sent me multiple messages that they really found the information very interesting and useful. So um, thank you very much. And if you can share this presentation, I will definitely forward that to them as well. I'll, I'll share have Kushbu share it with you. Perfect. Thank you so much, Pratham. And um, okay, guys, yeah, thank I you, think thank you people... for all of this. Absolutely. and yes i will be in touch with kushbu for uh, anything else that comes in the future as well absolutely guys theek hai really nice talking to you all and thanks mantan again